Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial where we'll be painting a galaxy scene. This is one of the seascapes from the Endless Skies collection. Just like the other, it was painted on a circle canvas but you can actually just use an ordinary square or rectangle. Begin by spraying the surface with clean water. I used a spray bottle but you could just paint this on also. Begin adding some colour. You can see here I'm adding in yellow. We simply just add this straight onto that wet surface that we've just sprayed. I'm also adding in some red here. I'm just using an oval three quarter brush, quite a soft little one so it adds the colour quite nicely. And then begin by blending straight into the water that we've just applied to the surface. This just gives a softness to the beginning of the piece. We want to build soft colours of layer that blend into each other. I'm using a two inch brush, but you could use a one inch also. So just continue to blend and now you can see here we're drying off this layer of colour. You want to make sure it's completely dry before proceeding to the next phase. We're just building colour layers so you can see that I let that one dry and then I wet the canvas again with the bottle. I'm adding more colour on top of the previous layer. So you just keep building layers very subtly rather than in just one strong layer. I like to, gla it's called glazing, technically. I like to do this where it allows the layers from underneath to shine through. So you can see we've built up a few layers of colour here. I think this is about five layers. And I like to do that, just like I say, to bring this luminosity to the painting. Each layer shines through from the previous. So now, again, the yellow is completely dry, all of the layers. We wet the canvas again and we start adding in colours straight on top. We're using a green and like a teal colour here. And again, it's just the exact same principle. So wet the canvas, add the colour and then blend. You can see that I do spend a few moments blending just to make sure that everything is smooth and don't worry if there's little patches that you can see just above that white area. These will be blended in more later on when there's more colour layers on top. 
So you just ensure that it's dry once again. And you can see here I'm using the hair dryer again just to speed things up and just checking that everything is completely dry before going on to the next layer. So those layers that I was just discussing are completely dry and you can see that I sprayed water on once again. When I rub my hand over the surface that's just to spread the water out because sometimes you get little drips and I don't want the paint to drip down. So I'm just smoothing out the water to give it an even coat. So now we're just adding in more colour and you can see I'm adding in and these areas are getting a little bit darker. Well not the whole area but just picking out little bits to darken. I did use a little bit of a reference from a Milky Way photo which you can find online um, Google one and see which one speaks to you the most I do use one sometimes but I guess a lot of it is just um, feel <laughs> I know that sounds strange just I like to feel and just let let things unfold as they do you can see I've put that little bit down the middle but again as you'll see later on that will be blended in with more colours on top. So just keep adding in those layers and then go on to the blending. So we'll just ensure that those layers are completely dry before moving on. You can see I've got that spray bottle at the ready and I've wet the canvas once again. Just spreading the water out to make sure it's an even coverage. And we're starting to build up different colour layers here. I've actually got more of a blue colour on my brush here because the initial colour was quite a teal sort of green colour. I'm adding in a little bit more blue. So I simply just used the same teal but just added in a little bit more pink just to give it a sort of blue purple tint. I do like to ensure that the colour is a little bit darker towards the edges and I will do this on this size canvas and this circular canvas and I'll also do this on most of my paintings just to draw your eye to the lighter focal point which is the Milky Way section running down the middle. So you notice that I'm adding more colour towards the edges and again just blend out the colour and you can do this in different directions, you'll notice that I do the same, some go right, some go left, some go downwards or upwards. It's just to give it a little bit of movement, just to soften everything.
So once again, on top of a completely dry surface, we're now adding in some more colour, but again, I've already wet the canvas with that bottle before I add this colour, which you'll notice is more of a purple. So I'm just... I don't know whether you can see it in the video here, which is what I was talking about at the beginning. You can now see this glazing starting to happen, so all of those layers of teal underneath, you can now start to see them shining through that purple, which I have to say is one of my favourite. I, like I said, I love, that's how I love to build my skies in particular, so that there's a zillion colours for the beholder to look at. So just keep adding in that colour and then we'll do exactly the same again and blend. So once again we've let that layer dry that we've just added the purple and we wet it again and now we're going to add a pink. This is just the magenta. I will list all the colours inside the Patreon post so you can read exactly which colours I used. This is a magenta over the top of both the yellow, the purple, basically all the colours from underneath and I just think it's a nice, just harmonises everything and brings the, you know, brings it all together I feel. I do love a bit of pink, I must admit. It's something that's crept into my paintings. I, I never used to use pink at all, but it really has crept in, and I, I think that pretty much every painting has magenta in it. So, exactly the same again. Just add that colour, and then in a few moments we'll blend it, just exactly the same as we did before. So just like all the layers before, we've let it completely dry before we're proceeding with the next colour. And you'll notice that I'm adding in some more magenta. I just wanted to make it pop a little bit more. I felt like it was a little bit too pale in the last round. So I just wanted to make sure this layer had a little bit more magenta. And you can see that the colours are really starting to come together now as a whole. So it just gives it that tonal like luminosity that I was talking about at the beginning. It all ties in really nicely. So just keep adding in colour and now we're going to blend just exactly as we did before. Now for the fun part, now we start adding some stars. So you know I've got my trusty star toothbrush, it's literally just putting on some white paint. Um, I also want to say that the white that you're seeing here is actually the white of the canvas. I haven't actually added any white um, to this painting. This is the first white we're adding as these little stars. So what I've done is I've mixed up, I think you might have heard this in my last tutorial, that I won't use white straight out of the tube. What I usually do is mix it with something else. So I've mixed it with a tiny bit of the magenta just to take the sharpness out. And literally just with a toothbrush loaded with that paint, just splattered it around creating little stars. And then as you'll see with a very fine brush here, I'm picking out some of those little splashes just to accentuate and make some stars shine a little bit brighter than the others. I'm actually picking out little areas inside that white section just to accentuate those as well. So you'll see quite a few little stars start to appear in this little segment.
so just continue adding in some little stars you can see I've got my liner brush the really fine one and then I've also still got that oval brush and what I'm doing is just softening some of the edges of those larger clusters of stars or larger stars you might have also noticed in the last segment that I I added a little bit and then decided to take it out so I, I li simply just used a little bit of kitchen roll just to do that so if you make a mistake don't worry just rub it out and and just move on to the next section of the painting so I've got the toothbrush out again just adding in some more stars just to build you know that depth when you see the Milky Way and there's like a zillion trillion stars this is a really nice way just to build those quite quickly you'll notice I don't put them in every single area because if you look at the night sky or a photograph of the Milky Way, there's, there's patches where stars are more densely populated together and then there's areas where there's less. So I'm trying to replicate that here. You'll notice there's a group and then there's not so many in other parts. So just keep picking out little areas. And this is a really fun part, so just enjoy it. So you'll notice what I'm doing next is with some of that white that we've used to paint the stars, I'm just going to make the white area of the Milky Way blend in a little bit more to the bottom, so into the yellow. So I'm literally just painting in little sections just to bring that further down more towards what will be the horizon. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm also with the same loaded brush with the white and the slight tint of magenta just adding in to the top area just to give it a bit more of a wider feel at the top as if it's like swooping down into the painting I don't want it to be so much of a, of a line coming out of the corner well I say corner you know what I mean the curved area that corner I want it to have more of a curved sweeping feel so I'm widening it, you can hit, see here I'm widening the bottom area, just exactly the same. And you'll notice it has got some of that pink in it, it just gives it that little, like I say, it's not a stark white, you don't want it too vividly white. Sometimes it works, but I feel it can be a little bit too much, it just adds a little bit more interest if it's got a tint to it. So that's why there's a little bit of pink in there. So just play around with the top, just widening that area, just to allow it to swoop in, like I say, into the painting.
So in the last section we were adding in all of our little stars. You'll notice I added some into the yellow area as well. We're now going to start to paint in the horizon because this was a seascape so I want it to have a seascape horizon. So we're roughly about a quarter of the way up I would say. I want to create a line. Now I'm using here an old trusty ruler which I've had for years but you could actually use um, tape or masking tape or artist tape if you had that to hand. So you're simply just allowing yourself to mark that line quite easily. You can see a little bit it's just gone over the top so I'm just wiping it away with kitchen roll but just much like the same exact principle as the sky you allow each layer to dry when you're painting the water so wet it paint, blend, wet it, paint, blend and we're wanting to replicate the colours that are in the sky so obviously we've mixed those and we still have those available so I'm just simply adding those straight into the water at the bottom you'll notice I'm doing some of the downward strokes just to give that illusion of water and the depth more towards the bottom as this is where it would be the most darkest so again, like I say, it's just the exact same principle. So you mark your line for the horizon and then just wet the canvas, add the colour and blend it. And then allow each layer to dry in between before you add the next layer of colour. So you'll notice we've built up quite a nice teal colour, just like the sky, and that's completely dry, and now we're adding in some yellow. Again, just to kind of replicate what we've got going on at the top of the painting, and to sort of match towards the horizon. So it's just exactly the same principle, like I say, just keep building colour onto a wet canvas, either using a brush to wet it or using a spray bottle full of water, and then just blend. So just keep building up those layers just the same as we did with the sky and I've just been working on the horizon a little bit and you'll notice here that I'm just adding a little bit of white just because that bot that sort of bottom right area of the horizon is a little bit too dark so just to give it a bit of um, definition I'm just adding in a little bit of that white the same white that we used for the stars and then just blend it you'll notice I'm blending more with my oval brush um, just because it's a little bit smaller so I don't want you know I don't want too big a areas with that big brush so I'm sticking to the little one just because this is a little a smaller area and I don't want huge brush strokes in it so that's the reason I haven't really used my other brush in this little section but just keep building the colour just exactly the same and then you'll get that lovely depth and that illusion of deep water which is what I was going for with this painting as well
So we've just been building up the water more like you've just seen in the last few seconds. And now we're just going to work on the area on the right hand side. I felt like it was a little bit too dark so just using that white magenta mix I've just added in a little bit more onto that, white, onto that right hand side just to lift it a little bit. And again exactly the same I sprayed it and then added the paint and you can see I'm just blending it to soften it as well. I'm also you can see here adding a little tiny bit to the left hand side just to give that illusion of it sweeping the Milky Way rather than it just be a sort of straight diagonal. I just wanted to have a little bit of a curve there. So we're just drying that off and then we're going to move on to the next bit which is just tinkering around with the stars. Like I say this is the final stages of the painting so we're really just tinkering around, just refining things and just adding in those few last details. So now we're entering sort of the very last stage, I would say, and that is adding in the reflections from the Milky Way stars. So we want to add that to the water. Now, it's not, I'm not completely bothered about it being mathematically accurate, if you know what I mean. Just follow your heart, I guess. And I think I like to add those reflections where I feel they would be. I don't want it to be completely mathematical accuracy like I say just more of a little accent and you can notice that I'm adding a little bit more white down the bottom and that's to sort of give you the illusion of depth of that shine being beyond the perception of this painting so outside of the frame technically so that's why I've added more to that bottom, just to give it the depth. And you can see I'm just blending it just exactly the same as we did before. So I did also, just to let you know, I did wet that exactly the same as we have done to all of the previous layers with the sky and the water. And just exactly the same principle, dry it off and then feel if you feel like you need to add more white to it, just do that on top of each layer once it's completely dry. Just continue working on the water and adding in those reflections and you'll notice here that I'm using my oval brush and just adding a little bit of paint. It is literally just a couple of little spots and then pulling the brush to the side creates these lines just to give it a little bit of the essence of waves and the, the, you know, the, water, the water line and the light catching those. That's what I'm trying to replicate there. And again, it doesn't need to be mathematically accurate. I, I don't want them to be completely straight. So you'll notice I haven't used my ruler for those sections. I am just doing it freehand. And I think that just gives that little bit of variance. Like water has, you know, it's not completely flat when you look at it. But the horizon usually is completely straight, obviously. The waves themselves, you know, they're different shapes different sizes different lines different diagonals so I will just paint those bits freehand just to give it that sort of essence and I think that's more or less it guys I mean I, I think we've covered pretty much everything that I did in the painting you might notice here a couple of tiny little last stage tinkerings I think I add a little bit of pink yeah a little bit of pink to the water just to give it a bit more dimension 
and a few more tinkerings. I've, um, you might notice that I'm matching up some of the stars that are nearer the horizon. Those are the ones that you would see in the water. So I'm just replicating those inside the water as well, just to give it a little bit of more of that reality. So this is a more or less made up painting, but I do like to have those little elements in just to make it bring it to life and make it real. And I think that's more or less it. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this one because this one was so much fun to paint. I loved bringing all those colours together. It actually looked a bit like a rainbow at the end, <laughs> which wasn't really what I was going for in the beginning, but that's what's so fun about art, isn't it? Something different happens at the end. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. And the next one is coming soon, a couple of days, and it will be ready. Thanks, guys.